Hotels are going to be very busy at this time of the year. Summer is usually the peak season and the festive mood has already begun. But strictly talking about the tourist arrivals, ARIM, the Association of Hotels and Restaurants of Mauritius, is forecasting 1.4 million visitors this year, a remarkable performance after a few years of decline. This year we're expecting a 4% growth in arrivals, so we'll reach, uh, hopefully we'll touch 1.4 million mark. Where do you come from? I come from Melbourne. Australia? Yeah, Australia. Okay. So, what are you doing here in Mauritius? I'm here with my, uh, my family. We're all here. There's 11 of us and we're coming here to Mauritius because we all heard that it was a beautiful island, beautiful country and we're like, why not come here? Mm -hmm. So, uh, when you came here, you're on holidays, I guess? Yes, holidays for three weeks. Three weeks? Three weeks. So, what are you going to do in those three weeks? Well, we went snorkeling today. We're going to go scuba diving, I think, tomorrow. And then we're doing all sorts of things, zip lining, quad biking, a lot of things. So much activities here you've done. And um, how do you find the service in Mauritius? I love, everyone is so nice and welcoming. Like I seriously came in here and everyone's just say hello. Every morning, good morning, good morning. I love it, it's so welcoming. This is you're talking about the hotel? Yes, hotel. But I feel like a lot of Mauritians, yes, are yeah. very like that. I mean, when you go other places, the activities, how do you find them? Uh, amazing, everything's just really good. Good quality, everything just helpful. Now, after going back to Australia, would you recommend people to come here in Mauritius? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I want to come here every year now. This is where I want my yearly destination. Come here, it's amazing. We are first and foremost a holiday resort destination, so people will come here and stay for longer periods than other countries that we can compare with. Um, this being said, um, the potential for growth is very much here and real and we can play on various fronts. Uh, one of them is um, the fact that Mauritius is an all around destination. We can play on that. You have never been that vocal on how best to make the most of holidays in Mauritius during our winter here, which is very mild, as you know. <laughs> For sure, hotels would be having a busy end of year. Apart from traditionally catering for people on holidays, hotels engage in organizing and hosting end of year gatherings. At the Ravenella Hotel, everything has been planned to ensure timely delivery of service. Since we are entering the festive season, please tell us a little bit more about end of year parties, corporate parties. For the festive uh, season, uh, for the Christmas uh, um, season, we organize, we have a dedicated program uh, for the entire period, that's during two weeks. Uh, not only obviously for adults, but for teenagers and, and the kids as well. Uh, we organize, uh, uh, as usual, for the 24th December and for the 31st December, a special gala buffet dinner. And uh, obviously we have a dedicated uh, entertainment program with uh, a lot of surprise for our, for our guests. A new opportunity that we offer to our guests is uh, a romantic dinner in the water. So it's meaning that we have a dedicated, uh, I would say, swimming pool where uh, guests, they can have a romantic dinner in, in, in Bermuda and barefoot and stay in the water. So this uh, is uh, quite unique in Mauritius and we are uh, sure that uh, we work very well. Um, we have already organized it and uh, it, it has been very successful. Since we are entering the peak season, please tell us a little bit more how your hotel is going to operate for these two months. Okay, um, Ravenel Hotel, I have the, the pleasure to say that uh, we run all year around in night occupancy. Obviously now we start our height and peak season for November and December and uh, um, we are um, very pleased to offer to all of our uh, valuable guests a lot of, uh, uh, as well, um, good opportunity in terms of land sport and water sport. 
We have uh, uh, obviously a, a very uh, well-equipped boathouse that's at the disposal for all the guests in house. We as well um, we offer a very nice uh, uh, sport village, uh, a very nice fitness center. We have uh, uh, two tennis courts. Uh, one of them is polyvalent, so we can play as well mini foot, volleyball and basketball. So as you can see, uh, we have a lot of choice in terms of sport and activity to offer to our guests at the Ravenal. Um, we know that in summer we are exposed to cyclone threats and uh, we may have some, we may, have, we may not have any, we may have heavy downpours during the winter season also, so we never know. It has been a challenge and it is growingly difficult for hoteliers and others to cope with uh, uh, those climatic, extreme climatic conditions. Um, what we are doing in our results, in any case, is uh, an increase, a constant increase in activities that can be held within the results also. So this can range from, you know, um, yoga classes, uh, master classes on, on, on by, by the chefs, or a cinema uh, showing uh, within the results, and of course board games and a number of those activities. So. Um, during those times and days where we have extreme climatic conditions, uh, transport is a real issue and when visitors are obviously stranded within the resort, there are a number of provisions that uh, we usually provide. These probably are, are good enough for a small size of, of visitors or guests, but probably not sufficient for some others. But again, I think we, in terms of resorts, we have been doing, um, investing quite a lot into getting a variety and getting um, infrastructures within that can help cope with that situation. Not to forget that first and foremost, we are talking about the safety and security of our tourists. December means holidays for many people. Time to relax. And what about traveling to see the world? It's true that Mauritius is a popular tourist destination, but Mauritians seem to be progressively adopting travel habits, especially during the end of year. Since my travel agency being accredited IATA, I have always been successfully promoting all airline destinations. Comparing uh, last year, same period, November, December, we have an increase in sales, so many passengers traveling. Most of them are traveling for Asia, Malaysia, Singapore, Bangkok, Thailand, uh, Dubai, etc. Why Asia? Why not Europe or Africa? Or... Normally, why Asia? Because November, December, most of the passengers like to go for Asia because actually Europe is uh, very, very cold over there. So most of them like to bring, uh, they are traveling with their family and they, they like to go to like S Singapore, most of them like to go to Universal Studio, they like to go to Centers Island, to the Garden by the Bay. So we have lots of attraction over there. At the same time when they finish to Singapore, they travel by coach to go to Malaysia. And in Malaysia also we have Senwe Lagoon, we have Genting Island, we have lots of shopping malls. For that, most of the Mauritians like to travel. In the same, uh, as if in the same time for shopping and for attraction. Since all these years you're in this travel uh, agency business, how do you see people, um, what makes people now travel more? What do you think has, has uh, changed in our society that people are traveling more now? Because uh, I can say that uh, before people were traveling, only they know to go to the relative place. But nowadays, people are going to, to various countries where they know well that the travel agency is here to manage everything for them. There are no need for them to go to, to look off for a hotel because we are here, we give them, we always give our clients the two operator who will handle them in uh, during their stay and uh, if they want to break the journey, we give them a connecting flight. So we arrange everything that encourage more and more people to travel. As technology becomes an integrated part of our lives, leisure is not far when looking for travel a hotel, a spa, or simply a place to dine. 
Christopher Rayner is well aware of that, and that's why he was awarded Tecoma Entrepreneur of the Year. His online company, Maridil.mu, has been offering various services related to leisure. Startup businesses have become very popular nowadays, and online even more popular also in the Mauritius. Well, abroad we have eBay, Amazon, we have Airbnb, and many other websites. We also have Uber, which do not own any of their services or products, but still gather all the services and offer them to their clients. Today in Business Connect, we meet with Christopher Rayner, who is the founder and CEO of Maridil.mu and co-founder of Price Guru. He recently won the Tecoma Awards. Let's meet him. The adventure started with Maridil uh, when it became, ever, it became clear that the Mauritian domestic tourism sector was unexploited and it was, there was no platform that was actually gathering the entire supply from the hotel park as well as leisure activities. So it became evident that there was a demand. Mauritians were wanting to enjoy the facilities that hotels have to offer, but there was no dedicated platform that was there to facilitate their booking experience. I discovered that the popularity or the, the funness that Mauritians have for Mauritian hotels when I joined Sun Resorts uh, and uh, when I actually saw a report that uh, Mauritians were in fact staying in hotels and I analyzed the market and I realized that it was very complicated for a Mauritian to actually make a booking in a hotel in Mauritius because they had to make a call to the reservation department. Very often it took a you know, long amount of time to even get a response, to get a rate. So it was quite complicated but they were still going through this complicated journey to make a booking. So I realized that there was a, a niche market, a very specific demand, and with the right solution, um, it would work definitely. So everything started from there. Uh, Chris, Maridil has grown exponentially, if we can say, over the past couple of years. The success of Maridil, has it been because of the name, or is it because of the good deals that we find on Maridil? I think that, um, I mean, the name definitely is, I mean, nowadays, Mar I mean, Maridil has always been a very popular Mauritian expression. Um, but I think there's, there's different factors that make that it's been successful. I think the first element is timing. Uh, I really uh, view timing as a key element for success in business nowadays. So having not only the right idea, but being able to have the right idea at the right time. And the fact is that when we launched Murray Deal, we were what we call a first mover. So we were the first to offer this value proposition to the Mauritian public. So being the first of its kind and coming and fulfilling a demand, that's what really created the success story. You have offices in the country. Correct. But your main line of business still remains online. Yes, so um, we've adopted a, a very popular I mean, approach which has become more and more prevalent today is that we, are, uh, we operate an omni-channel model. An omni-channel model means that our customers today have the possibility to make a booking for a hotel, a restaurant, a spa or even a travel package online or if they're not comfortable with the online aspect, they can go into one of our agencies. So that is what we call omni-channel. It's been present in the digital sphere and also been present in the physical sphere. So having those two possibilities just makes it even easier for our customers. And, uh, and today we have five agencies across the island and we are having uh, a great, great response from our customers, especially elderly customers who aren't necessarily very at ease with the whole online process. What are the innovations that you would like to bring in the tourism sector? Technology is um, ahead of us. Um, we need to use it, we need to invest into it, and we need to cope with what technology is bringing out about as changes within consumer behaviors, within traveler behaviors. So, uh, which means to say that uh, we have to increase our B2C communication lines. We're very strong on B2B. This has been the case for so many years. We still have 80% of our tourists who use tour operators uh, in selecting the holidays here. Technology is also going to um, bring down barriers to supply, suppliers, and uh, which means that each and every visitor will have the opportunity to interact with one, two, three operators in various sectors, innovative ones, you have people who have invested into uh, street food tours in Port Louis and Maibo. You have other people who have invested into tours of old age buildings around Port Louis, 
or cultural artifacts and all. So these are aspects that are interesting and technology is going to bring these uh, for, for, for our visitors. As the festive mood comes closer, we can't escape those gatherings with family, friends and colleagues. Surely people working in restaurants will need to give more to satisfy the demand. A very important component of the hospitality industry is food, and people who handle food are always high in demand. In this special edition of Business Connect, we have landed here in pointe canonier Hotel. We are here to meet a few people who have more than 20 years of experience in the tourism sector. Today, we are going to see the importance and role of the food and beverages in the tourism sector. Good evening, Chef Murugan Kupen. You've been in the tourism sector since 30 years. What is the importance of food and beverages in this segment? Food and beverages, uh, it's uh, one of the main things that we can uh, uh, differentiate uh, our service uh, in the tourism sector. We all need to eat. So uh, we spend uh, three quarters of our time on holiday in eating or on the bar or to, to, to feed ourselves and to enjoy. Uh, so it is very important to have a really high quality of food and beverages uh, that Mauritius should uh, uh, can give to our, to our guests today. How does food and beverages influence the choice of tourists when they come to Mauritius? When we talk about uh, food and beverages, there is uh, lots of factors that we should take into consideration, like the food safety. The, now we are, we are talking about uh, organic food. We are talking about lots of uh, allergies that's coming. We are talking about uh, a, an experience. Eating today is not only just to feed ourselves, it's have an experience that we have something to, to like a story to, to tell our friends and families when we are back in our countries. So it should be really different from what they have originally in their countries. So that's why we, we try to promote our Mauritian food. What is the importance of our local cuisine in international fairs? It's one of the best way to, to, to show what, what is our Mauritian cuisine. So uh, as uh, we all know, Mauritius is a blended cuisine of Africa, India, uh, China and uh, Europe. Uh, that all our food has been uh, a cooked differently with a mixture of these four regions. Uh, in representing Mauritian food in fairs and competition, uh, it's a, the, the best way for professionals, that many professionals are in these fairs. So to make them taste our food, uh, try our food, and uh, I can tell you, we have lots of success for, for our Mauritian cuisine. Good evening, uh, Chef Vinit Sharma Boudan. Good evening, ma'am. You've just participated in an international fair which was held in Punjab. Please talk a little bit about your experience there. We was a proud Mauritian. So we was a proud motion to be in the Kila Govindgarh at uh, Punjab. And uh, it was not only me, it was me and our chef Angelique Amugam from uh, Ecole Sangari Tanjival and uh, vice president of Motion Chef Association. We were together just to, to do our heritage food in Punjab. What did you showcase as our Mauritian uh, cuisine? It was our rare, our rare food, it was our bread food known as fouillapin, it was a cat cat fouillapin and a rougai of prawns. Among so many countries, how far was the Mauritian cuisine appreciated? With the 40 countries and the Indian delegation, we were among the best. It was well, it was well known, it was, uh, it was very tasty, it was, they appreciated it. I think people travel for food now and they admit it. So uh, we have always um, given our best attention to food and beverage in all the results, as we say. Um, but as a destination, we have, of course, a lot more that we can do. Um, and there are plans to get our street food more accessible, in better conditions to the visitor, because we need to share the background information, we need to learn about the product, and we need to tell the story behind each wonderful product that we have in terms of street food. 
In the properties, when you look at the five-star luxury down to the three stars, many of them have positioned themselves at good food providers, or good drinks, or sundowner moments that are uh, absolutely fabulous. And when you look at some of the resorts that have invested so heavily in wine cellars, so heavily in chefs, so heavily in you know those um, culinary events that boast the destination, in those proper network of food lovers, you know, um, then. Of course, we are aware of all these things happening, and certainly we are um, all out in terms of getting the food experience to the next level also. What do you think should be done to boost the standard of Mauritius on an international level? The secret is training. Training, uh, me, what I can suggest to all uh, hotel management, restaurant, or our tourism authority to really invest in training for our Mauritian chef, for our Mauritian uh, service staff. Uh, it's one of the best way that we can really keep on the in international level. The level is just keep on increasing every day. Uh, we have to invest in technologies to gain in productivity. Today, through training, when we gain a certain professionalism, we are opening to the world. So it's one of a key point that, that youngsters can be attracted to join these sectors that they know they have, uh, they will get uh, attracted by lots of countries, lots of crews, lots of, uh, uh, around the world there will be a lot of demand on it as we have actually. And as we end this edition of Business Connect, we wouldn't say no to a full course dinner with our great chefs. So I guess, uh, Rishi, this is our last program and also our last edition for Business Connect for this year. Yes, Rishi, but this is not the last uh, program. Uh, of course, uh, we've brought you so many stories since the beginning of this year and uh, I hope you have joined working with me just I have enjoyed working with you. Of course, Rishi, it's been a fruitful experience. We'll bring you much more interesting stories from the corporate world in Mauritius next year. So much more business stories to come. And don't forget, find us on our website, the www.mbcradio.tv, and also do follow us on our Facebook page. We'll help you enjoy your festive season, and some people need some holidays as well. And then we'll see you next year.